divas of a more mature age welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me here on my channel today i am the eva monroe i'm here i'm tired i'm a new mom y'all <laughs> who in their right state of mind gets almost 50 years of age able to do whatever they want to do beaten to their own drum and then bring home two teeny tiny new baby puppies only me and i'm whooped however i will have you know that today i had the opportunity to shower before i did this video and um hopefully they're going to be peaceful while i finish this up if not we may have to pause and go figure some stuff out i don't know but they're cute. I love them. I had not talked about it previously, but if you've been following me for an extended period of time, and probably if you've watched any of my garden videos, you know that we had two county corsos, Jada and Django. And so we actually lost both of our dogs within like a three month period. And so I didn't talk about it on any of my videos or anything, but I was done being a dog mom at that point, right? Um, Django got really, really old and really, really unpredictable. And Jada suddenly got an aggressive form of cancer. And I was like, yeah, we're done with this. But then we had like a chicken massacre. We lost like 12 of our chickens while we were on vacation to some raccoons. And so we got two new pups. And you'll meet them one day. They're Ave and Amina. They're super cute, but they're tons and tons of work. So today, this video is in collaboration with my new favorite fabric company which is Baglarian Fabrics. I'm so excited to be doing this video you guys for two reasons. Reason number one I love them and number two man I love fall clothes right. I'm not crazy about losing daylight hours and cold and and my plants dying and things like that but I'm so crazy about how I get to look during the fall and how I get to smell. Because y'all know I love, you know, extremely heavy perfume like my Tobacco Vanille and my Homage Interlude Woman. I'm, I'm excited about that. Good blazer, nice big coat, shoe game, killing it. Because I have literally been in flip-flops since March, April, maybe May. So the lovely people over at Baglarian Fabrics sent me some beautiful fabrics. And with those fabrics, I thought I would talk about what's on the runway. Because I never pay attention to it. Honestly, like, I don't ever care what is trending and what's not trending. But this year, I'm excited because it's like a lot of 80s, 90s, like big shoulders, big boxy shoulders with a snatched in waist big bold prints trench coats oh if you don't have anything to wear this fall if you just have three good trench coats you can kill it everywhere you go like if you don't have a trench coat you need to a learn how to make one or b go thrift yourself one um if your coins is set up the way mine are but you need a, you need a trench you need a long trench now one thing i'm not crazy about is the whole scraping the ground thing that's going on i only like to scrape the ground when i'm formal because you don't wash coats every time you wear them and so you walking around collecting dust and covid and all that other type of stuff although i think they look very sexy i think they have the just a very elegant sexy appeal to them when a woman's walking and that coat's just coming in behind her but i'll go ankle but we won't do floor so now the first fabric and the first trend that i saw the first piece i saw was actually a valentino but baglarian sent me this lovely polka dot fabric oh now this is something that now this is the valentino oversized i'm calling it a shacket because it doesn't really have a coat appearance to me or i'm also going to put up a picture of this sergio hudson blazer that i saw which i was like oh my goodness i would love that i would love to make it 
because I ain't buying none of these trends. If your if your wallet is set up in such a way, well, you knock yourself out. But if you so, girl, get busy right now and you'll be ready to go when it's time to start wearing this stuff. This is beautiful. This is a rayon. Now, I know you're probably like, well, you can't make a coat or a blazer out of a rayon. You absolutely can. One thing that I've been doing a lot of lately is marrying fabrics. And if you don't know what that is, like just combining, like if I wanted to make, let's say, a trench coat out of this lovely rayon fabric, I would first interline it or underline it, whatever you call it, with maybe like a, maybe just a cotton fabric. You know, some people use muslin I have uh, this actually, this is a cashmere blend. I, it's lined with fleece. So it, it's just because of the original fabric is slightly thin. You could line, uh, make a coat out of this and line it with fleece. You just want to test the fabric out first. Like what I'll usually do is I'll cut a square of both of the fabrics that I want to combine. I'll sew them together. Some people will interface them together you know permanently bond them I don't like doing that because I feel like I'm getting really getting away from my iron-on interfacings because I just feel like the longevity of a garment is not there when it's got glue stuck to it so I have a really nice really expensive blazer that was um iron-on interfaced and you can see the fabric start to pull away from it. So I'm really doing a lot of sew-ins and things like that. But I love this fabric. This fabric is absolutely beautiful. Even if I wanted to save this until springtime, I could make a beautiful flowy skirt. Um, There's so many possibilities that can be done with this. But I see myself blazering or coating this. Okay? Now... All right, so the next fabric that I got from Beglarian, oh, this is my second favorite, okay? I'm not going to say everything's my favorite because y'all know how I am. I'll be like, ooh, that's my favorite. <laughs> they, when they reached out to me and I told them what I wanted to do, I said, yeah, well, send me fabrics that, you know, are, are slightly trendy, that are, you know, in or hashtag trending right now or whatever. And then they told me I could choose. And I was like... I can choose. I had this leather in my basket, child. It was in my basket on Beglarian. And I just kept looking at it. Is it Jill? I want to say Jill Saunders. I will, I'll make sure. It's LR-308. And I have three, only have three yards of this, you guys. I want to do something super funky with this. I love the way leather smells. It also, that also makes me think of fall and winter. When you smell leather, man, I love this. Look at the color of it. Oh, this is so good, right? It's so good. And you could use this side, which is the shiny side, or you could use the suede texture side. I think I would probably use this side. I, and I know I would. I love this. If you have ideas for this, drop them in the comments below. Now, I did find this Valentino um, kind of slightly oversized shirt, which is really snatched in at the waist. I love the pleating details on this. It looks like it might have been like a leatherous type material. I thought about maybe doing something like that, or I thought about bomber jacketing it like what about a pink bomber jacket i think that might be kind of cute with some fancy details or something in there but i i absolutely love that fabric okay so before i move on i was talking about leather and i think that that pink leather fabric might also make a really cute leather skirt and if you're looking for the cutest wrap skirt pattern that is not cute out of the package you can look for this Simplicity 8792. Now, I think I bought this from Walmart. Don't quote me on that, but it's obviously it's still in production. I know I didn't find it at the thrift store. It's not vintage. However, look at this pattern, you guys. Okay, full disclosure. It's not cute. <laughs> it's not cute, okay? There are some things to be desired. When you get this pattern, if you just sewed it up straight out the package, it's very straight. 
it's very wide at the bottom, okay? And you're not gonna like that. And I actually only found one person's review online who sewed this pattern, and that was the very thing she said. And when I put my twirl together, I was like, yep, she's right. Very, very mm, dated, not, not appealing at all, in my opinion. And so I actually made this skirt out of a faux crop emboss leather fabric that I got on my birthday fabric excursion. Because I don't know if I told y'all, man, I went fabric shopping in three states for my birthday. Let me know if y'all want to see that haul, child. I actually just finished washing, drying, dry cleaning all the fabrics that I got. It took me like a week to get all those fabrics prepared and pressed and put away. And I, it was a whole ordeal. But this was one of the ones I got. And when I saw that skirt pattern, I knew that that would make, it would make a beautiful skirt. That that fabric... So what I actually did with mine was I tapered it in. As you can see, I tapered it in at the side seams and I also tapered it in at the back as well as I added some boning to the seams just to give it a little bit of oomph and structure and savoir faire. Because ladies, like, forget about it. You cannot sew this stuff up straight out the package i'm sorry to tell you i'm sorry that you had to hear that from me um you can't not if you want it to look really really good because the model is typically going to be a tell-all sign of what you're going to get and some people are like oh i sewed this up i didn't like it it's so wide it's so yeah sometimes you have to add your own touch to these commercial patterns not sometimes all the time okay and so I tapered it, I added boning into some of the channels, as I said, and I shortened it a little bit, just slightly. But I love this because I love this, um, the slanted wrap thing that it has going on. Look at the print, that croc emboss. This is super cute. Another thing that I did was I added, because um, I am going to make some of these for my website, I added three buttons, right, so that the waist could possibly be adjustable. So, you gotta love that. She was smart for that, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. These, this is super cute. I was gonna put a buckle and a tie on it, and then I thought, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna add a buttonhole, and then I'm going to actually add multiple buttons so that you can adjust it. So, there you go. Again, that's Simplicity8792. Did I tell you guys that if you order anything from them, you're going to get a discount? How could I ever forget that? Y'all know I love a sale. 10% off. Use my code, Eva Monroe. I think it's Eva Monroe 10. It'll be in the description box below. Okay? Now, this one, in case you didn't know, I'd be up in here bouclaying my face off. Okay? <laughs> tweed jacket in my face off y'all and oh my goodness I you know I'm thinking really jazzy Chanel-esque style jacket because honestly the ones that I've made have been in like kind of muted colors like I've made a bunch of white ones I made recently I made a black and brown one um I made a pink one I think you guys bought all my white ones, but um, I, I have made all muted colors. And so I thought, how cute would this be? Look at this. Look at the colors of it. The colors are so delicious. There's, it's purple, teal, um, is that turquoise? Just absolutely stunning. And the thing about it is the fabric is thick, okay? Because sometimes you get these tweed fabrics and they I bought some tweed from Joanne y'all I was trying to cut that stuff and it was literally like disintegrating right before my eyes I was so upset because 
the color was like a peachy kind of color. I went out, I bought beads and everything for it, and my heart was broke, okay? But this is really, really a nice fabric. I love this. I'm thinking maybe like, what about this little number here, which I think is Moschino, a little uh, Chanel style crop jacket with a micro mini. Oh, how cute. But this is definitely, this is another one of those like statement type colors. Don't wear black in the fall, okay? Just, yeah, just don't do it. All right, so I have another tweed fabric, and this is a red and black print. Um, another, what, what would this be? Would you call this houndstooth? It's red and black. Um, I, I like this print. I picked it because it was something totally different from everything else that I had. I thought it might make a cute um chanel style jacket i thought it might make a cute blazer many different things that um you could do with this now on the chanel style jackets one thing i'll tell you is that the best pattern that i have found for that chanel style jacket is on vicky sews and it's the jackie jacket if you just learned how to sew yesterday and you want to make a boucle jacket that is going to be the pattern for you I don't think that jacket even has any darts. Let me check and see. Hold on. Hold on, because y'all know I got one. Okay, so yeah, this is the a Jackie jacket that I'm working on. And I think I'm almost done with it. The only thing I have to do is finish putting the buttons on it. I put a little, so I put a little fringe detail underneath there. Um, and I didn't bead this one. I just thought, no, I won't do that. Um, just gold buttons and these buttons are the same buttons that are going to go down the front and I lined it with a brown satin fabric but this with the mandarin collar this is the easiest pattern ever it's only got one dart and that's a dart at the shoulder so no darts at the front none of that you got four pockets you can do the four pockets if you want to and they're actually fake pockets on this pattern. You can make them real pockets if you wanted to, but a super simple, very elegant, very sleek jacket, the Jackie jacket. So if you were looking for a easy to make like Chanel style jacket, I totally recommend that for your tweeds. I even, I even did that in um, denim. So, all right, my last fabric that I received from the lovely people over at Buglarian Fabrics is this beautiful linen. Y'all know I always have to have some color in there. I think I picked this because I have a, I found a Roberto Cavalli suiting fabric that is this color. And I thought to myself, hmm, how can we bring these together? But look at the colors on this. There's like, there's purple, there's chartreuse, there's pink, oh, greens, just absolutely stunning. And it's a nice linen. It's a really nice linen fabric. All linens are not created equal. Trust me when I tell you. But um, I absolutely love this. And if you wanted to order this, it is SR-038 on the Beglarian website. Let me know what you have in your mind that, let me let me give y'all a good glimpse of this. It is Seta Pura, made in Italy, is what's on the fabric. But let me give you a good picture of the print. It's kind of almost panelist. You see the print and the pattern repeat? I love this. I, I love this. What do you have in your mind that is fall-esque that I could create with this let me know all right let's go back to valentino for a minute because i saw this black shacket like cutout type situation coming down the runway and it immediately rung a bell in my head of a fabric that i already own okay so this is a fabric that i already own i was in my local fabric store one day and I'm, I'm going to say something, and y'all can get an attitude if you want to. I don't care. I went to Jackman's one day, and I said to myself, I said, Self, 
I wish that Jackman's would just go ahead and become an all quilting store so I can stop coming in here every so often thinking they're going to change my life and I'm going to find something that I absolutely love. I never hardly find anything in there. They don't cater to dressmakers, okay? We can start with that. But on this one particular day, I was looking on the clearance table and they had this. And I bought it all because <laughs> that's how that's what I do um, don't judge me and it's a cutout you see the but it's got flowers for the cutout I could totally see this being a cute shacket it almost has more interest than the one with just the squares cut out of it that Valentino made sorry Valentino I you know Y'all cool with me. I'm just going to let you know right now. I'm not actually their target customer. Okay? Because I'm cheap. All right. Now, another thing. The next thing that I saw coming down the runway, which I was absolutely obsessed with because she already knew that she had a fabric that was very similar, was this. I got I got my notes here, y'all. Pardon me while I, while I look through them. Awake created this white number here. And I thought, oh, that's so nice. That's so cute. I'm so here for the big drop shoulder. I love that. I feel like it's a nice look, especially when it's done right. And I especially love it when the waist is snatched on the whole bulky drop shoulder thing. So I had a pattern. I had the Adelaine blazer from Vicky Sews which is a blazer that stops approximately right here. It's a rather short blazer. Exact same shoulder details, very nice pleating. And I thought to myself, girl, why, why wouldn't you? Just why wouldn't you make a coat out of this? So I have this fabric, which is a cashmere blend. Y'all got to look at this thing, though. She hadn't been pressed out or straightened out or anything yet, but... I just want, I hope, I really hope she's still in my, my white light on here. Um, I hope the camera is picking up the sparkle, sparkle, sparkle on this thing. She's pretty much ankle length. I added pockets to it. I extended the blazer to make it a long, I would call this a cardigan more than I would call it a coat because the cashmere fabric is fairly thin um and so I underlined it with a white fleece fabric let me see if I can if y'all can if I can give you a let me pull I'm pull you up girl <laughs> so yes I underlined it with a white fleece fabric when you put this thing on it feels like the coziest day on earth I'm not lying and never mind the fact that it is absolutely Stunning. Let me turn her around to the back. This is a mannequin stand that I can't trust. Um, same two pleats, large pleats on the back. Absolutely. It looks like, it reminds me of snow and ice. When I got this fabric, I showed it to my girlfriend. I said, girl, this just makes me think of snow and ice. Like it has to be like a big oversized sweater or coat. I have some more of this. Um, and I'm thinking that I'm going to do some type of sweater or something with that. But I love this. I love the drop sleeves. I love everything about this coat. Now, the Adeline blazer pattern, when you go to download it, it does not have pockets on it. So I just added a single welt pocket because how you going to twirl and act cute if you don't have nowhere to put your hands? <laughs> One must have pockets, right? I love this. Super stunning. Whoever gets this is going to be one lucky girl i love this okay so that was awake mode who created that which was super stunning okay another thing that i saw flouncing down the runway that i was absolutely smitten over was this again we back at valentino i don't know how we keep ending up here but we do this valentino amazing black and white detail Coat. Okay, if you guys remember when I showed you this beautiful jacquard fabric that I had purchased from 
um, where did I get, I don't even remember, but I showed it to you in a fabric haul video and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And then I found Vogue's Isi Miyaki 2038, which is this pattern here. And I thought to myself, no other fabric in the world has any business being this coat but this fabric. And I love, this is, this is a whole statement. If you a leggings girl, okay, it's all, all you need is this coat. It, kill it on the top, kill it with your shoe game, and you can wear your leggings and a t-shirt. This is the whole statement. Like, this is all the freaking statement you need. I love this thing. It almost breaks my heart that I made it to um, make available to my lovely customers. But I love this thing. This jacquard is heavy. The one thing, let me tell you some pointers about this pattern if you want to make this. Because I would, I totally recommend making this pattern. It's beautiful. One thing is this pattern is extremely large, Okay. I started out, it, it's small, medium, and large, and this is a small. I started out with the large, and as I was making my toile, I was like, oh my goodness, this thing is like a tent. It was huge. And so I went looking for some reviews, and the few people that I found that made this pattern said the exact same thing. They were like, the sleeves are huge. This pattern is huge. And so you're going to want to make a twall to see exactly what size you want to make. If you don't want to make it look like a tent. Okay. And just let me give you, let me, I want to give you just a little bit of an idea how big it is. Okay. Because when I say you guys are going to be like, oh, well, you little, you probably think everything's big. Now, I'm not that small. We can start with that. But this coat is that big. Okay. So, you see how large it is on me, but man, look at this. I'm looking at myself with the mirror. I'm like, girl, you, this is the type of jacket that you just put your hands out and you go out in public and you just wait for the girls to ask where you got it from, right? And then you tell them I made it and they can call me, but I don't have this fabric anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally joking, but yes, this big oversized statement coat, absolutely beautiful. The pattern is absolutely large. Another thing, the thing that I did not like about this pattern is that it is only a half lining. I don't like half linings. And with this, I thought I was going to be okay with it. But I was getting ready to send this out to get it pressed the other day and I changed my mind because I'm going to rip out that half lining and I'm going to fully line this because I just feel like if you shall see underneath the bottom of there, like you need to see something great, you know, at least black, not the underside of the fabric, right? So I'm going to create a full lining for this coat. Um, just so you know. It, the pattern only comes with the half lining. Extremely large. However, one of the easiest commercial patterns I've ever sewn. Because <laughs> this is just my opinion. Commercial patterns are overcomplicated. Okay? Um, I don't understand why it is that you can get a commercial pattern for a blazer and it consists of 532 pieces. And then you get a PDF pattern for a blazer with better instructions, far more detail, a lot more savoir faire. They've even included canvassing instructions and all that. And it's like 10 pieces. I don't, I don't even, the math ain't mathing, but that's just me. I'm not that great at math. Okay, now we talked about trench coats, right? Let me, let me take it on back to the trench coats for a minute. Because I've been trench coating, okay? She has been trench coating. Now, let me show you this purple number. Look at this purple number that she wore. This is an Armani satin, matte satin fabric that I created this purple trench. Lined the inside of it with the fuchsia satin lining. 
that thing is giving me everything I needed to be giving. Now, that pattern is the Gladys Coat by Vicky Soaps. It is also this. Let's see if I can bring her. <laughs> I, I, one might have, like, uh, the Eva Monroe, why do you have so many mannequins? <laughs> Let me get her straight, y'all. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I have so many mannequins because, of course, I sew, but I have the one that's hanging. Um, she's a size 16, and the, and those are actually none of the. This is the only mannequin I actually have. The rest of them that you see me dragging around here, I have four dress forms. So this is actually the only mannequin. But I got her because I feel like she styles the clothes better than the dress forms do. She has real legs and real hands and arms and all that type of stuff. And sometimes I like to put hats on her and sunglasses and just really freak her out. This is the Gladys coat as well. And... This fabric right here is an example of sometimes you got to go out of the apparel section when you're looking for good, unique, different fabrics. Go over to the upholstery section and just look around. Have a look-see and see what you might find, right? This was supposed to be an upholstery fabric. That's what they said. But child, she made a coat out of it. And the coat is hot, okay? Let me turn it. I want to turn her around because I just want to show you what I did in the back. I did this in the back on the purple trench as well where instead of making the belt that goes all the way around and ties at your waist and you got all that extra extra read all about it I just did this back here and this will be a little bit adjustable where um, you can tighten it up a little bit if you want to but this Gladys coat pattern I really like I feel like if you are sewing hold on all right, girl. There you go. Okay. Oh, like hear me fighting with the mannequins for the whole video. If you're sewing on a beginner level, she needs a present. If you're sewing on an intermediate level, you can make this coat. Now, the one thing that you're going to notice about this coat, if you go to Vicky's website and look at it, is it's got about nine panels. And again, I combine them. Just because I was working with this print and I did not want to have to pattern match on nine pieces because it was enough for me to have to pattern match on the pieces that I had to pattern match on. So it's, it's a lot doing all this, just in case y'all did not know. It's a whole lot. It takes a lot of time. It takes patience and a little bit of skill to match up these prints. So I combined the panels on the pattern before I actually cut my fabric out. This Gladys coat is really nice. On the purple coat that I did, it actually has, let me get it for y'all. It's not pressed up or anything, so. Okay, I wasn't gonna show it because it's not pressed up. It's gonna go out to the cleaners, but I need to put the buttons on her. So I did add a storm shield on both sides of this jacket and I'm gonna sew on a button there to hold the storm shield down. But like I said, I lined this in a fuchsia satin fabric. Um, this fabric is gorgeous though. Like I said, this is an Armani satin fabric and I underlined it with a, um, cotton fabric so to give it some body and some structure but the shoulders and everything on this thing look really really nice that's actually one of my favorite makes probably of 2023 so when I put all the finishing when I put the funk on it because that's what I call it I will show that to you guys but the Gladys coat really easy trench pattern it's not the only trench that she has so I would recommend you just go through her website and look for other trench patterns because she does have others. And honestly, I don't think Gladys is the nicest one. It's just the one that I bought when it first released and I didn't feel like I needed to purchase another one because 
I'm also at a point, like, fun fact, where I've stopped buying a lot of patterns. And you should too. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. Like, spend to get you a Helen Joseph Armstrong or, you know, one of those, like, um, pattern making books or one of the books about how to alter patterns and things. You get you one good pants block, a skirt block, a coat block, one trench. You really have everything you need. You can finesse and finagle those patterns every which way but loose. And pattern making is not a strong suit for me, but I am learning a lot of things as I go. And I've learned that I have entirely too much paper around here. And I think that the more you sew, you will realize the same thing to be true. I see some people, they have like file cabinets with hundreds and hundreds of patterns. But to me, the thing about commercial patterns is the big four, five, they keep repeating the same things over and over again. Like when I went through my pattern stash, I had like five button up shirts that all look the same, like from different <laughs> pattern companies, or maybe some of them were from the same pattern company. One had a yoke in the back. The other one didn't have a yoke. One had, and it's like, just, they just keep repeating the same stuff. And to me, it's most often boring unless you get vintage patterns because what they're making now, it's not interesting to me. I'm waiting for Nomi to really, really do something. Give us, Nomi, give us something. We need something good because that's the only way I'll ever buy a pattern. Okay, so thank you so much for watching me today. This video was fun. I didn't mention all the trends that I'm really loving and checking for because this video would have been two hours long. But in the comment section below, First and foremost, let me know what you sewing. How you sewing? What you sewing for the fall? Are you making coats? Are you making blazers? What are you making? And also, be sure and let me know if you order fabrics from Beglarian. As I told you guys in my first video when I talked about them, the very first time I ordered anything from them, the shipping ain't cheap, okay? I'm just gonna let y'all know that. However, the fabric that you get is going to be well worth it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna spend as much money as you're gonna spend from a mood or a, a, or the other companies out there because forty nine, fifty nine, sixty nine dollars a yard. That's not what you're gonna be spending here. So I, I did see some fabrics on their website for twenty three dollars, so on and so forth. But it's gonna be like eight and twelve and you know. So use my 10% off code, order some fabric, stay in your house. They talking about these numbers are raising again and so, 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 child. <laughs> so thank y'all so much for watching me today. Until I see you again, be blessed and...